Hello everybody and welcome to our in-depth tutorial of this brand new Toyota Audio Multimedia Infotainment System. So what this is, is the successor to the Toyota Intune system that a lot of you guys have been using for years and all of their products. This is basically the next generation and it's a big step up in terms of capability, graphics, performance, all the important aspects are totally ground up reinvented. There is nothing in common with that previous Toyota Intune system. This new system has been designed in the United States by a US team, so it is definitely tailored to the taste of Americans. And uh, you know, without further ado, we'll go ahead and dive into this new system. You should anticipate seeing this roll out through the Toyota lineup over the next year or two, um, especially their brand new products are gonna get this new system immediately. Today we're in the 2022 Toyota Tundra. So let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. So right off the bat, one of the first things you're gonna notice is just how nice everything looks inside of this new system. The graphics are really top notch and the animations as well as the general performance have definitely improved. Twitter says it's five times faster as a matter of fact over the previous generation Intune system. Now, of course, the screen sizes and quality will vary depending on the models that Toyota rolls this out to. Here in the new Tundra, we have the 14 inch display and it has absolutely stunning graphic quality. Definitely the best I've ever seen in any Toyota product. And uh, hopefully they'll be rolling out similar quality screens to even the lower end models, which have smaller uh, infotainment displays. Nevertheless, let's take a look into some of the features. One of the interesting things about this new generation is there is no traditional home screen as you know it, and uh, a lot of other manufacturers include this. Instead, what Toyota has gone to is just a simple arrangement with these very large shortcut buttons that go along the side. Um, this makes it actually very simple to use. Um, compared to some of the competition, I did not struggle at all to get used to this new infotainment system because we just have this very simple structure with not a lot of menus and things to get lost and confused with. So let's go ahead and start off with the first thing you come to in the uh, infotainment system. That is going to be your Android Auto or your Apple CarPlay, assuming you have those things paired. One of the new benefits of this brand new infotainment system is that both of those systems are gonna run wirelessly now. So assuming your phone supports that, you'll be able to just hop right into your truck or vehicle and uh, without connecting anything, you'll have access to both those systems. Now going ahead and tapping into that, uh, here we are in the wireless Android Auto infotainment. And uh, again, the graphics are gonna be stunning. Uh, a lot of the performance is very, very snappy. So you can zoom in and out, do all types of things very nicely. And of course, this is just gonna be your standard Android Auto. But the important thing is that it takes up the entire display. I know some vehicles kind of seg segmented into a certain section. With Toyota's new infotainment system, it's gonna take up the entire display. But I won't spend any uh, extra time in this system because you of course know what this is. This is the same in all the models. We're focused today on the Toyota infotainment system. So I'll go back into this uh, menu here. The next step down is going to be what you're greeted with most of the time when you start up the vehicle and that's going to be your navigation system. So this is Toyota's next generation dynamic navigation system. As you can see the graphics on this as well as the performance have been enhanced a lot. You have pinch to zoom, which is uh, really nice and responsive. Uh, this does update over the air as well. So uh, you're gonna have a lot of the modern features. You're gonna have all the updated roads and stuff that's just gonna come into the vehicle without you having to go to the dealership and have that updated or buy those uh, navigation chips that you used to have to buy. Of course, you do have uh, some settings over here on the side. So if you press that button, that's going to be able to give you your uh, live traffic ability. Uh, you can also call the destination assist, which I, I believe is calling a hotline and allowing someone to kind of set your destination for you. That's available for a trial period. And then right over here, you have the really big search button. When I push this, you'll notice that it's gonna default to Toyota's voice assistant, uh, which is something that's new for this uh, next generation system. So you do actually have a phrase that you can say just like with an Alexa or a Google Home, and that'll allow you to really operate a lot of different aspects. As a matter of fact, when you go to search for anything in this vehicle, it defaults to the voice assistant, although you can still use the keyboard if you prefer to do that. Navigate to a nearby McDonald's. 
I found 15 results. The first is McDonald's at Athens Boonesboro Road. Would you like to go to that one? Yes. Calculating route to McDonald's. So as you can see, this responds very quickly, uh, very fast. It's way more intelligent than the previous generation systems. And as you can see, it even has some extra information because you have that feedback uh, by having the uh, connection to uh, data. Of course, like I did mention though, if you press this, you can manually search with the keyboard as well. It's just that the default will always be the voice assistant because this system really emphasizes trying not to be uh, distracting to you. Let's go ahead and take a look down at the next section. That's going to be our uh, audio. So since I'm connected to the Android Auto system, you'll notice that this is going to be populated with Android Auto uh, music, which is what is playing currently. But of course, as with uh, every other vehicle, you're going to have the ability to change between a lot of different sources. Like I was mentioning earlier, one of the things that strikes you again is just how large everything is. Toyota made the fonts really huge. That way it's super easy for you to hit. So you do have uh, built-in Apple Music as well as Amazon Music in the system. You have whatever your phone is connected through and you also have the traditional radio that you can select. When you select the traditional radio, this is going to be the display that you come to. So over here on the side, you're gonna have your favorites lined out. Through here, you can mix AM, FM, as well as satellite together into one um, section. And then you also have what's playing down here at the side, the different sources, as well as some of the adjustments that you can make are gonna be on here on the left side. So when we hit tune, that's going to allow you to type in a station. Again, all three choices. You have your favorites, like I mentioned earlier, this is where you can change between your different sources. So if we click into satellite, we can go through all these different sections here, uh, depending on what type of content you're looking for. So say you're looking for news, then you're gonna pop over here. You even have different types of news. And then you've got all the visualization so that you very quickly can find what you're looking for. You've got the full graphic and everything. Very simple and easy to use and you can pause or play the satellite radio as well. Additionally, just like with a tablet or a phone, you can press into different things. That's gonna expand that out. That way you have uh, a really large picture of what you are listening to as well as like the album art and stuff like that. I should go ahead and point out across the top, you're gonna to always have this kind of status display. This is gonna show you uh, different information that you need to know. Of course, you have the traditional time, but you also can see uh, if your phone is connected or not, what the battery status on your phone is. This is like your uh, data connection as well. And then for this model with the Qi wireless charging, this would be glowing if we were actively charging your phone. Or if you're not, that way you don't have to actually check the phone itself. You'll have that reassurance that it is indeed charging. Okay, so we'll go ahead and continue on to the next section of the infotainment system. That's going to be the phone. So by default, I am connected via Android Auto. I can click this though because we can go into some of the settings with the phone. And it's going to take me back to Android Auto. You, of course, do have your default um, phone settings and stuff if you're not actively connected to Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. But again, the idea with the wireless system is that you will be inside of this most of the time. Going into the next section is going to be vehicle. Uh, this is just going to contain some, you know, basic stuff about um, your mileage, things like that. Uh, but it does really break it down in a nice way. Uh, as you can see, here's our fuel economy, how much uh, range we have, our average speed since the last startup. And then you do have it on a historic basics basis as well. And then you have any types of alerts or messages that the vehicle needs to uh, tell you about. And going down one more, we have our settings. So this is where uh, the things for you to customize, uh, the heart of the system is kind of going to be located in here. One of the things um, I think that's noteworthy is our vehicle, our driver profiles, excuse me. So that's the first thing you're going to be greeted with. So you might have noticed when you first boot up the vehicle, it pops up which driver profile it's loading. Um, I do believe that syncs to your uh, specific key fob, so that will allow 
you know, for instance, you or your significant other can have different profiles, different settings inside of the system. And there is, of course, a guest mode as well. Now we'll kind of go through these uh, areas one by one to allow you to see. So here's our uh, profile. Um, it is, it has your uh, device as far as your Bluetooth device. Again, like I mentioned, it is linked to the key, so you don't have to actually select your profile each time. And then as we go into the actual Bluetooth devices, this is going to allow you to see over here, as all the phones that have ever been connected to this truck, um, you have your CarPlay and Android Auto devices. Uh, multiple devices can be paired to this at once. That is a change from the previous generation Intune system. So what that means is if you're in the vehicle with someone else that's also paired to the system, you don't have to disconnect your phone to pair their phone. Instead, you can just click this little button here and switch. So that's very nice and simple, especially um, noticeable with something like the situation that we're in, where I have an Android phone, Mason has an Apple phone. We would be able to seamlessly switch between those if we wanted to use CarPlay instead of Android Auto. Carrying on to our general, uh, this is just going to give you different types of settings, um, including turning on and off the screen beep. I don't really like that, so I'm actually gonna turn that off right now. And we also have screen sensitivity um, settings, which will allow you to use this uh, easier with gloves. I obviously am not wearing gloves right now, but in a, this situation, you could use that. You can go in here, ch change the time zones, um, change the formatting. It can also change automatically, depending on if you are uh, linked to your GPS or not. And then of course down here we do have our language and units which you can se select and change. We're in the United States so we have fuel economy and miles per gallon but you can change that to kilometers per liter or uh, whatnot. Moving on next we have our notifications. So in here we have notifications for software updates, you have vehicle suggestions, Navigation during calls, that would be allowing the navigation to speak to you still, even if you're on the phone via the Bluetooth. And then we have different things through here. So that's gonna tell you like, for instance, when you cross a border, uh, unverified roads, traffic alerts. Like I said, the system does have the connection to the data. And then inside of Wi-Fi, this is an interesting one. Uh, you do have Wi-Fi hotspot abilities with this new system. So by checking this off, this would allow your car to operate as the hotspot, and then you could connect your phone, tablets, different types of devices uh, to the vehicle itself. Underneath of that, though, you have traditional Wi-Fi, and that's the opposite. That is for your vehicle connecting to your home's Wi-Fi, which would allow it to you know, download updates and things like that without you having the uh, data subscription. Carrying on, we have our display. You can turn on and off your display right here like that. You can manually adjust the brightness and contrast, or you can just leave it on automatic. As far as this specific vehicle, automatic has been perfect. Um, it's definitely selected the right types of brightness and contrast. And then you can do the same things for your camera, choosing the brightness, contrast, and color corrections that you prefer. Sound and media. Uh, inside of here, you're gonna have various different functions. It's basically just gonna be all the sounds that happen inside of this system. So you do have your auto sound levelizer that's going to adjust the volume of your audio up as your speed increases. Furthermore, down here, you have the volume of your ringtone inside the vehicle. Uh, that way it's loud enough you hear it, but quiet enough that it does not uh, disturb you too much. And then you also have your system voice when the vehicle is talking to you, or, and as well as the driving assist functions and then we can turn on and off surround sound abilities inside of this specific JBL audio system we have on this Tundra. And speaking of that, underneath of that, you have the sound tuning. So this, of course, is where you can up the bass, mid, or treble to whatever your desire is, and then you can also center the speakers really easily using these arrows. So if you want to keep the audio up in the front and not disturb your rear passengers, you can do that, or vice versa. Further below that, you do have a default media. Uh, right now, it looks like it's set to Apple Music as the default. And you can turn on and off your um, cover art for your music, depending on what your preference is. 
and you would have very similar functions as far as uh, your radio is concerned, as far as and turning on your turning on and off the metadata and the artwork. And then you've got all types of different settings inside of Sirius as well. For instance, blocking explicit content uh, if you don't want to accidentally play an inappropriate song for your child, for instance. Um, looks like we have start songs at the beginning when you first tune to a music channel, so you'll never pick up in the middle of a song. That's kind of a cool function. And you do have a few additional things as far as uh, notifications when your sports team is playing and some really interesting content. Again, like the system is a lot smarter than the previous model. Now below that, we do have different uh, settings for our navigation system. A lot of the stuff you'd be used to seeing in some of the uh, previous models. So you do have the ability to set your home, work, see traffic incidents, uh, show speed limits, a lot of smart functions like that. I, also, a lot of Toyotas are going to be able to read the speed limit signs already, and they'll display that. Um, in the system or in the gauge cluster. As far as route options, you can turn on and off, avoiding tolls, highways. I'm not sure what a seasonal road is. Um, I guess one that you can't drive in the winter and border crossings. Vehicle and customize. So this one is gonna depend on which specific vehicle you have, but most of them are gonna have very similar functions as far as door controls, boarding and exit, climate settings. So for instance, we can go into our lights that allow you to set how long you want the lights to stay on, for instance, before they turn off. Um, we've got that set on 60 seconds. You could go up to 90 or choose 30 or have them turn off immediately. And you also have auto on sensitivity because of course you do have automatic headlights on the vast majority of Toyota products. But this allows you actually to change the sensitivity because some vehicles turn on you know, very quickly in like a shadow or under a bridge or something like that. So if that annoys you, you could turn it to darker, which is going to make them stay off longer. And then there are your door lock settings as far as unlocking all the doors when you use the smart access, how long it takes to relock, if you want the sound to play out, uh, various different things uh, about that. Voice and search, um, this is what I was speaking of earlier. Um, it allows you to use the wake phrase, which I can go ahead and demonstrate here in just a second. Hey Toyota. What do you want to do? Find nearby Wendy's. I found 15 results. The so, first is what as you can see, that was what we were demonstrating kind of earlier. You can tell I'm hungry right now. Um, but it does work the same, but like I said, you don't even have to push a button or anything. You can just use the quick phrase that you're used to with like an Alexa or Google Home. And let's jump back into the settings again and finish this section up. So the bottom section is related to uh, vehicle settings. So we do have dealer information. Uh, looks like you can add in a specific dealership as far as their uh, information, contact name, and number. They might do this before you buy the vehicle. Uh, you can name the vehicle. You can also privacy lock, which I believe is uh, makes it where all of the uh, text messages and things that pop up they're not going or won't pop up um, when other people are inside the vehicle. This is where you can check your. Uh, information as far as the update and which software version you are on. And then uh, you do have some apps that you can connect to the vehicle. For instance, uh, you have the Remote Connect software, which will be on your cell phone, and that will allow you to control a lot of different functions. You can check the fuel level, you can remote start, things like that. And that's just going to be the area where you can link those two things together. All right, so that's pretty much going to wrap up our in-depth look at this new Toyota audio multimedia system. As you can see, it's a lot of big changes from the previous generation Intune system, tons of performance enhancements. And really, I think the thing that struck me uh, using this system is how easy it is to get used to. Even though I did ramble on about a lot of settings, this is actually a lot simpler to use than uh, many infotainment systems that I have uh, used in the past.
Anyways, we hope you uh, enjoyed this, that you learned a lot about this new system that you might have in a future Toyota or a Toyota you own right now. Uh, take care and make sure to tune in for more reviews uh, on our channel.